St. Dominic's Family by Sister Mary Jean Dorsey, Order of Preachers. Episode 7, Matthew of France, died 1227. The only man ever to have the title of abbot in the Dominican order was Matthew of France. He is associated with the very earliest days of the order when its government had not yet reached its final form. He holds our interest for several other reasons, among which was the regard St. Dominic held for him and the, truest, and the trust reposed in him by the first brethren. Matthew is French, as we can tell from his name, but we know nothing about him until he appears in history as a student at the University of Paris. Here, he attended the lectures of the young master Reginald of Orleans, who was, some 15 years later, to become, to become a shining light of the Dominican order. Matthew passed his examinations with honors and was ordained. Matthew was dean of the canons of Castres in Languedoc when St. Dominic came there on pilgrimage to the church of the Spanish martyr, St. Vincent. The chronicles tell us that the friars arrived soaked and hungry, having come through a rainstorm. St. Dominic sent his companions in to dry themselves by the fire while he went into the church to pray. Eventually, the dean sent someone to call him to supper, and the messenger came back completely awed and explained that the visitor was up in the air praying and he did not like to disturb him. Matthew went to see for himself and was so struck by the sight of the saint in prayer that he promptly abandoned his benefice and threw in his lot with the preachers. Let us remember that it was quite a step for a man with Matthew's education and prospects to follow an unknown Spanish priest into a life of poverty and uncertainty. We cannot doubt that both St. Dominic and his brethren fully appreciated Matthew's natural talents. He was always called in for every decision. He was, was appointed to the most responsible offices in the order, and in the intervals when St. Dominic himself could not be at hand, he was apparently appointed to govern the brethren. At the dispersal, it was Matthew who was chosen abbot by the brethren to rule the order in the event of St. Dominic's death. The fact that the title abbot did not survive does not in any way lessen the regard of the early brethren for his saintly and solidly practical man. Matthew's greatest contribution to the order was probably his influence in Paris during the difficult days of their establishment there. The dispersal had sent him to his alma mater at the head of the band that consisted of Bertrand of Garigua, Michael of Fabra, St. Dominic's brother, Manas, John of Navarre, and Lawrence of England. Matthew was the only one with any friends in Paris, and they needed friends very badly. The first year was one of struggle and difficulties. People were suspicious of the new friars, unwilling to give them any chance to prove their worth, and quite ready to say that the whole plan was impractical. Matthew, as superior, had to demonstrate that the Dominican way of life was feasible, and he had to do it against great odds, living in a rented house in a hostile city. Eventually, a friend of the friars gave them a little hospice, which was to grow into the famous convent of St. Jacques. Another friend, professor of the university, came into the order, bringing with him his right to teach in this closed corporation, thus establishing the Dominican chair of theology. It was Reginald of Orleans who brought in the first vast wave of vocations to staff the new order, but Matthew of France did likewise uh, of this important work. When St. Dominic came to St. Jacques in 1219, he found no less than 30 friars there, attracted during the first difficult year. He promptly set them to found five other houses, leaving Matthew to refill the vacant places. On the death of St. Dominic in August 1221, we may suppose that Matthew of France took over the government of the order until the following May, when Jordan of Saxony was elected the Master General. The months of Matthew's government were packed with business. The opening guns of the controversy between the friars and the civil authorities at Paris had already been fired. The house at St. Jacques was bulging at the seams with the crowd of young novices bred in by the preaching of Reginald. Missions needed attention. A program of studies had not been fully worked out. A new crusade against the Albigensians was imminent. One estimate places the number of young candidates admitted to the house during his time there as prior to be nearly 600. The disposal of as many subjects was itself a formidable task. Matthew died in 1227, and he was buried in front of the prior stall in the convent of St. Jacques. Over his tomb, facing the prior, was carved his likeness, so that those who followed him in office might never forget to imitate his virtues.